hummingbird. Yes, I finally binged the entire collection of the Halloween franchise movies this Halloween. So I'm super excited to be sharing my key takeaways as an aspiring filmmaker, but also a girl, a ghoul that grew up loving Michael Myers and that is also obsessed with Taylor Swift. So somehow we're molding all those interests together and I'm going to be sharing how I went to the Halloween Eras Tour this year. From Michael's debut era to his reputation era, we're gonna go through the entire franchise one era at a time. How does that sound to you? I'll be your host for this evening. My name's Mandy. All right, just kidding. <laughs> Eras tour references aside, uh, I do wanna take a moment to introduce myself. If you are returning, thank you so much for your continuous support. Welcome back, Ghoulsters. And if you're new here, my name is Mandy Spooks, and this is our Spooky Oasis, where we fan goal over spooky pop culture, and I live my best spooky life so that you can too. If you can already tell, I do want to take a moment to just share that if you have come here for a typical horror junkie Michael Myers review, that is definitely not what you're going to get here. This is in fact probably the most niche video that I will ever do. I have been um, very intentional about following my heart these days and I had this idea to go to the Halloween Eras Tour, aka watch the entire franchise. It is something that I have wanted to do for many years, especially the last five years as a content creator, and I've just never had the actual time to do it because I've been so committed to like covering all the events and latest news. So this year, as I slowed down, I was finally able to scratch that item off my bucket list. Um, and alongside that, I thought it would be really fun to just cover the franchise in a different perspective that only I could cover. You know, like there are so many horror experts out there and horror junkies, horror lovers that can talk about Michael's, Michael Myers, but there are not many that can talk about Michael Myers just as passionately as they can talk about Taylor Swift. So I figured, hey, if we're ripping the band-aid, if we're going all in on being our truest selves and not caring about the algorithm, algorithm this is 100% like the most niche, impossible thing to rank I could ever do. As I have mentioned, I know that the horror community can be very magical, but very judgmental. There are very, very strong opinions opinions when it comes to how people talk about horror films. I think any film in general, uh, but I think that that has been one of my biggest fears as I have officially shared with the world that I want to become a filmmaker with my husband. Um, I think that the biggest part of my imposter syndrome is that I don't feel like I can intelligently speak about movies and I think that I need to get past that because I think the fact that I love movies so much and that I am a storyteller is what makes me um, a potentially great screenwriter and I don't think that you need to be this like bougie film critic to know what resonates with people and I think that that is also a big part of my ma marketing background um so I'm just gonna be myself moving forward and it's okay if I don't know all the right terminology or how to how to talk eloquently about films I know what matters to people I know what makes people smile I know what pe makes people cry what makes them scared um so I'm gonna be running with that from now on even though I'm terrified about it so all I ask is that you guys remain kind in the comments I know that we're not all going to have the same opinions about all of these films that I talk about moving forward and that's okay I love to have discussions and hear people's different perspectives all I ask is that we always remain respectful of one another and that is across all my platforms so if you love fan ghouling 24 7 I do invite you to join our discord server where our ghouls are always chatting about the latest books movies tv that they're watching and keeping it respectful at the same time because that's just how magical the ghoulster community is all right so as I mentioned we're going to be going through the movies one era at a time but I am going to be using the original Halloween 1978 as its very own era since it's used as so many as it's used as the jumping point for so many different eras so of course naturally we're going to call this one the debut era I don't feel that the debut album of Taylor Swift is as iconic as some of her other eras are. I know many people are excited for Taylor's version. However, when you look at her entire discography, these songs are just not what she's known for. Um, original Swifties like me love her. That's how we discovered her, fell in love with her. But as time has gone, those songs have just not been as popular as her other stuff has been. When you compare it to Halloween, 
Halloween is like the standard for horror. It is the reason why slashers exist the way they do today. And as an aspiring filmmaker, this is like the end all be all of success when it comes to being a successful filmmaker. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why I feel that way. So backtracking a little bit, Michael Myers is my man. I grew up falling in love with him. He is the reason that I love Halloween, the season, the way that I do. So a little bit of perspective as I was growing up, um, I grew up watching cable television. I think it was like on AMC that they would show all of the movies or I hear everyone say AMC and I know they still show them there, but I don't know why I feel like I saw them like on TNT or TBS or something. Um, but specifically Halloween 5 was always on the TV when I was growing up. And I'll talk about it a little more when we get to that film. But I just grew up so exposed to Michael Myers that I was never afraid of him. I just really loved him and the vibes of the movies. And it wasn't until I was older that I saw the 1978 film and seeing in comparison what the franchise became to then going back to seeing how it originated was literally just like mind-blowing and so inspiring if I'm being honest to know that this film started out with one simple idea with a $300,000 budget that turned into $70 million, the most iconic horror character of all time. Maybe that's arguable, but to me he is. Um, the leading scream queen of all time, final girl, Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode. Um, the most iconic soundtrack, I will say, like you cannot argue with that one. Um, it's just incredible what they did with the limited budget they had and the amount of creativity that they had. And I think that that's something any filmmaker should aspire to. And I think that that is one of the things that just really motivates me as a amateur, basically filmmaker, because we don't have a budget, right? Let's be realistic. Like we don't have a lot of money to invest into what we're doing. So for me, it's just like, how can we get as creative as John Carpenter did to produce this film with even less than $300,000 because I stop and think about it and it's like, you know that he freaking created that film score by himself like in one night, he just had like a little keyboard and put it all together. Like that is some amazing talent right there. So anyone who says that like Halloween is not good or that it's not the best or that it didn't set the standard is just, I'm sorry, but based on facts, the numbers don't lie. I love marketing. I love data. Data speaks and you can't just turn $300,000 into 70 million without just genuine talent and hard work. So I said what I said. Um, all right. And moving on to the Jamie Lloyd timeline, I have not been able to find like the official, I mean, these timelines don't have official names to begin with, but I just feel like that's what it's best known for. Um, and I am going to give the Jamie Lloyd timeline the Fearless Era title. It's So to break down which movies are in that, we have Halloween 1978 does kick it off. And then we go into Halloween to 1981, which is where Laurie Strode is in the hospital. And then we skip to Halloween 4 because Halloween 3 is not part of any of the Michael Myers timelines. So we go from 1 to skip to 4 in 1988, where Jamie Lloyd is introduced. And then Halloween 5, 1989 and then The Curse of Michael Myers in 1995. So that is a total of five films in that timeline. And the reason that I think that this era is the fearless era is because we meet Jamie Lloyd, who is my entire inspiration for being the spooky ghoul that I am today and why I am not afraid of Michael Myers. And it is like the silliest thing ever, but I hope that some of you can resonate with it. Um, fearless, the genre or the era to me is about facing your fears, of course. And yes, Taylor Swift was a teenage girl when she wrote this and she was talking about love and like how terrifying and scary it can be um, as well as life. And I think that those of us who laugh at her for it are just like, do you guys remember how you felt as a teenager at one point? Like life was scary. Life is scary as an adult. So let's not pretend that being terrified of falling in love and life as a teenager is silly because it really isn't and I think that that is what has made um, Taylor Swift stand the test of time 
And I believe that that is what has made this timeline stick out. I don't know for sure, but I feel like there are a lot of millennial women like myself that grew up watching Halloween 4 and 5 that have carried that fearlessness from Jamie Lloyd with us the rest of our lives. Um, because it was just, for me, I loved Halloween, right? Like, I fell in love with Halloween since I was a little girl, watching Hocus Pocus with the streets filled with trick-or-treaters to watching Halloween 5, same thing. Like, those were the Halloween vibes I grew up on. And then seeing this strong little girl that was, like, so terrified, just, like, completely keep fighting and fighting from the, like, scariest boogeyman ever was just so inspiring to see and has just really stayed with me throughout time. Like, that was iconic. Don't tell me it wasn't. And if you haven't seen it, you need to watch Halloween 4 and 5 because it is just, like, such a milestone for, I believe, women in horror history because you're seeing, like, an actual little girl fight. So I just think that's really cool. That's everything I have to say about it. Um, I will say that I had never actually seen these movies in order. I tried really hard to like watch everything in the timeline it belongs to in order as I was binging this franchise. So it was really cool to actually see the entire Jamie Lloyd timeline play out as well as like the curse of Michael Myers. Uh, I don't want to get too into detail of like what happens. <laughs> Sorry, ignore Bruce in the back. He's just getting comfy. Um because I want you guys to watch them and I don't really want to like break down this is what happens in this film this is what because you guys can go watch them and have fun with them uh, and hopefully as you hear me talk about the eras it kind of helps you figure out which era you should actually watch if you don't have time to watch all of them um so yeah I really loved seeing the entire story play out and like why she's able to beat Michael and know where he's at because I would watch those movies as a kid but I didn't fully understand I just thought she was magical turns out it is magic but you don't know why until you watch the whole timeline <laughs> all right and moving on to the H2O era, which is arguably one of two of the most hated timelines in the Halloween franchise. And I couldn't really think of which era to really name this one, if I'm being honest. So this one, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of had chat GPT help me with it because I was like, I got nothing chat GPT. Like, what era does this fall under? And I don't know that I agreed with it, but I'm going to share it with you guys anyway. So the Halloween H2O era includes four films and it is Halloween 1978. Of course, the original Halloween 2 with Jamie and I mean with Laurie in the hospital 1981. And then it jumps to Halloween 20 years later. Fun fact, I never knew why it was called H2O. Silly me. It's because it's 20 years after the original encounter with Michael Myers in 1978. So we're on Halloween H2O. And then we have Halloween Resurrection 2002 which is, I'm just gonna say it, one of two potentially, the no, it is the worst movie in the entire franchise. Like if I were to tell you guys, don't watch this film in the franchise, it would be this one. And it pains me because like, I don't wanna talk poorly of any films. I know how much heart and effort and hard work goes into every single film that has ever been made. And this one's just not it. it is, maybe it would have been better if it wasn't a Michael Myers film, because um, when you watch it, you know, like, it is 2002. We're talking about, like, reality TV series on MTV. Um, like, it feels very much like a product of its time, which I give it respect for. But the film was just bad. I can't even recall what it was actually about. Uh, Buster Himes is in it. Uh, Tyra Banks is in it. Like, I'm telling you, if you want a... Uh, a dose of nostalgia from 2002, then maybe this is the film for you. But other than that, I would say skip it. Um, but going back to this entire um, era timeline, I don't know why I keep doing this. Um, I do want to break down why ChatGPT called it the red era because I was just completely like 
what era is this? Like, what? I just doesn't stick out to me. So it says, this timeline deep dives into Lori's trauma and her struggle for closure, echoing the emotional turbulence of Red. H2O cap captures the cathartic, empowering moments while Resurrection adds some chaotic, bittersweet energy. It's nostalgic yet intense, showing Lori's growth while grappling with her past. Again, I don't even think that ChatGPT could, like, cohesively come up with why <laughs> this timeline falls into the red era um so if you guys are swifties and love halloween and understand the h2o era please drop your suggestions below of which era you would have coined it because i just didn't i do want to say though that i do believe maybe maybe people will disagree with me but i do believe that h2o had one of the most iconic scenes in Michael Myers history and it does not get enough credit why don't we see it enough and spoiler alert um it is when um Lori beheads decapitates whatever takes Michael Myers's head off and I'm not going to tell you like what happens after that but that scene was cool I am sorry but anyone who says otherwise like you're just being a hater like have some fun that was a freaking cool scene why don't we see it more I don't know but we're gonna talk about that again when we get to another part of this video <laughs> all right so moving on we are going to again one of the two most hated timelines because it's it's equally polarizing I feel like people either hate the H2O era or they hate the Rob Zombie era. That's right. And it pains me to say this because I really, really, really wanted to give the Reputation era to a different era that I'm going to talk about. But the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, oh, I can't give it to it. Like the Rob Zombie era has to be the Reputation era and it kills me, but it just has to. So the Rob, Zomb Rob Zombie era has two movies, which was a complete reboot starting over from the beginning, which I think is something unique about this era, unlike the other ones that always used 1978 as a starting point. So Halloween came out in 2007, and then you, you had Halloween 2 in 2009. So I have some like pros and cons to this era because I don't think that it deserves the like bad reputation that it has. But before we talk about the movies, I want to talk about how it is the reputation era. Of course, I think it's very obvious. But this timeline, this era is just a lot darker, grittier, edgier. It is a Rob Zombie era. Like, you know, if you've seen a Rob Zombie film, you know what a Rob Zombie film is. So think of Michael Myers times Rob Zombie collabing. It is like, it's madness. It's reputation is what it is. And... <sighs> It pains me to give it this because, like, I love the Reputation Taylor era, but I don't love the Rob Zombie era. But in reality, that truly is what it is. It is this, like, gritty, darker, darker, heavier version than anything else in the Halloween franchise or the Taylor Swift eras. And it just, like, there's nothing else like it in the entire rest of the universe franchise whatever you want to call it um so it just makes sense it just goes the math is mathing you know this film though i do want to say props to rob zombie for being creative enough to really like reimagine how these films should be they did give michael myers and this story so much more of a background and um the entire first half of halloween is actually Michael Myers as a kid and you're seeing how he becomes the Michael Myers. Um, I have heard a lot of terms of how to explain this timeline that I don't feel comfortable saying on camera, but I will say that I almost feel like these films could have been something else besides Michael Myers. Like, I feel like it takes the magic of Michael Myers away a little bit because when you're talking about like horror icons and villains, killers, you don't really need to know this much about them. I think the more you know about them, the more you sympathize with them and understand them. And that is what make like not knowing is what makes them scary. And I didn't always used to agree with this. And this was something Mr. Spooks taught me because even showing their face is like something you shouldn't do. And I didn't really agree. 
But as I compared these films to the rest of the Halloween franchise, I kind of started to realize that that is true. And I think that giving too much of a story to Michael in the Rob Zombie films kind of ruined the fun. It made it a little too dark and took away the funness of the Halloween franchise. And I know that that sounds so silly and people are like, Mandy, it is supposed to be scary and dark. Like he's a killer. Just like some of you get mad that I'm like, oh, vampires should be hot. It is what it is, okay? I know what the people want, the spooky people girls, you know? <laughs> um, so like I said, it's not bad. It is really good in the sense of like, very creative, very cool for him to have just completely done something different with this that no one else did. It just wasn't my cup of tea because I love the Halloween movies for like the fun of it. I love Michael Myers. I love how cool and like jump scary it is. And the Rob Zombie ones just made it a little too heavy that it took the fun out of watching Halloween for me. All right, and next getting into my favorite era, which is also commonly known as the H4O era, which I really love because it's a play on the H2O era. It is 40 years after Halloween 1978. And this is the only timeline that John Carpenter was involved in because he wanted to right the wrongs of where the franchise went after the first film. So this film is definitely the one that I'm most comfortable talking about because I watched it as it came out as an adult, as a content creator. So I have all the fun facts. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably like my, um, what's that word? Like that one thing you're always like proud to like humble brag, but that's like my humble brag as a content creator is I know so much about the H4O era. <laughs> um, and this one is by David Gordon Green. Um, and this is definitely going to be the Midnight Era. This was the one I wanted to call Reputation because it is my favorite era and I do think in many ways it is reclaiming its reputation and righting the wrongs of all the timelines but we'll get into why it's midnight later. So this one has four films of course Halloween 1978 and then 40 years later we have Halloween in 2018 where you see what happened to Laurie Strode, how her life played out 40 years after the, the vicious night on 1978. And then we skip to 2021 in Halloween Kills. And something really cool about this is that from Halloween 2018 to Halloween 2021, we skip three years later, right? But Halloween and Halloween Kills take place on the same night, which I think is really cool. Like, I think it's very cool how they did that. So when you're binging it and you finish Halloween, you go straight into Halloween Kills and it's like a seamless experience. I love it so much. Um, and then we have Halloween Ends in 2022. So a little bit of background with these films. Um, like I said, I don't want to get into the details of what each film is about but with all the other timelines we have this narrative that Michael is after Lori because they're related because it's his sister and like that's the reason he chases her and kills her and blah 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 with Halloween H4O with these new movies this new timeline John Carpenter came back because he was like look they were never related like this is all like a, a path he never wanted this series to take and Lori's not related to Michael. So the way they do that is with this film, they rewrite that this is all in Lori's traumatic head that he's after her because they're um, related and all of this. I don't think she thinks they're, that he's after her because they're related. He just thinks, she just thinks he's obsessed with her. But in Halloween Kills, I believe, you find out that Michael's not chasing her. It's this new crazy psychiatrist that is basically turning it into a game for her, for him and her, and setting him on the path to continuing to chase Lori. So I think they did a really good job of that. And I honestly kind of feel like each time I watch this timeline, it gets better and I make more sense of that part. I'm not going to lie to you guys and say that this timeline is perfect because it's definitely not and Halloween Ends definitely has its um 
failures and flaws but overall i feel like this timeline is really good and it's near and dear to my heart because it's one that i really got to see like halloween 2018 was the first halloween film i ever got to see in theaters as an adult with my husband it was really cool to just think back recently like wow we saw halloween 2018 together and we saw the entire rest of that timeline together on premiere night um in fact i have like a story for each like I remember exactly where I was exactly the experience I had for each three of those films which was really cool um so it was really nice as a Michael Myers fanatic to be able to experience that as an adult um I do just want to say that I do believe Halloween Kills I think is potentially the best film in the entire franchise and I know that that is like a very unpopular opinion but when this movie came out um it was like right after 2020 everything that happened and I definitely felt like a lot of people thought it was corny and that it was like ridiculous that all these people were chasing this poor man and I'm like you guys totally miss the fact that this movie was a commentary on how things happened through COVID with fake news spreading and mobs and the rioting like I just felt like they did such an incredible job of using Michael Myers to comment on the madness of 2020 and I'm kind of getting emotional thinking about it just because like when I saw that film I was like man that really captured like how I felt over the last year you know and to see it put into like my favorite spooky oasis which is the Halloween franchise it was just like a really really nice full circle incredible job I mean everyone knows like Halloween kills like if you ask anyone like hey what's the most um vicious version of Michael Myers you'll ever see like maybe it's arguable that it could be Rob Zombies but Halloween kills like ain't nobody gonna mess with Michael Myers after he's been freaking when after he's been burnt down after someone has tried to burn him alive like he is at a whole other level coolest kill scenes like don't come and tell me that it's not good like that firefighter scene caused a controversy it had everyone freaking out like it was top notch like that film was very well done and unfortunately it led us into halloween ends with very high hopes and it just did not deliver and i have some very serious thoughts on it um but i would say that halloween kills is probably like tied with halloween 5 for me like halloween 5 for me is like it is my origins with halloween it's jamie lloyd it is who i why i am who i am today but halloween kills is like captured a very pivotal moment in time for me as I became Mandy Spooks and this like full authentic version of myself but also while I dealt with some real world crap that really sucked with the rest of the world you know um so then leading into Halloween ends just really quick I do want to say that I saw it once in theaters and I decided that I would never watch it again because I hated it that much um but to do this video justice and like to be fair and just like I wanted to earn this I haven't shown you guys but like it says the Halloween tour down here, Michael Myers. It just doesn't show on camera. Um, I wanted to earn this shirt. Like, I specifically told Rudy, I found it online. I am not buying it until I can say I did the entire Halloween Eras tour in one year. Like, this is my badge of honor. I'm so proud of it. Um, so I just had to watch it. And it, honestly, I'm, st I'm not going to lie. It still wasn't good. But it wasn't as bad as I remembered it. I think the part that sucks is that this film was supposed to be like the end of Halloween and Michael Myers and it just wasn't a Michael Myers film and I felt like this film could have gone so many different directions and the direction it went in is like why like how how did you just make two incredible films and then you ended with this. I just don't get it. It could have been like a different timeline, its own thing, but just it just didn't work. Um, and before I get into my theories on how they could have fixed it, I do want to share a little bit about why I feel this era is definitely the Midnight's era of Taylor Swift. So a little bit of context. If you're a Swiftie and for some reason don't know this, the Midnight's album was a compilation of songs that she wrote throughout her eras at midnight that just like never made it into the albums for some reason um and it's just like a culmination of like all her eras right and I think that that's why this album really like resurged her popularity why I fell back in love with her 
and I think for this timeline of Michael Myers it's the same thing. It was really really cool watching all of the previous timelines leading up to H4O because I had a new appreciation for how well they paid homage to all the different eras like it wasn't the first time you saw a mob um and now i'm blanking of course because i didn't write it down and i was like i'm gonna remember it when i really am not um but if you watch all the other movies there are little easter eggs and like moments and callbacks in the h4o era that were in the older films and that's why i'm coining this one midnight because on one hand like I said, I really wanted to give it reputation because I felt like for John Carpenter, it was the reputation era. Like he wanted to right all the wrongs that all of the timelines had. He wanted to fix Michael Myers' reputation and be like, they are not related. Like setting the record straight, you know? Um, but when you really think about it, it really is more like Midnight's because it is a culmination of all the other eras. It's taking the best, like some of the best things and really like correcting what went wrong so i do want to talk a little bit about halloween ends and after watching all the timelines where it could have been fixed i do want to mention that we did not really discuss halloween 3 season of the witch because it's not a michael myers film but it was part of the halloween franchise i have watched it i did rewatch it it came out in 1982 and if i had to give it an era i would give it the 1989 era because baby now we got just because I feel like 1989 was like the album where Taylor completely crossed over into like mainstream pop. Very different from like Season of the Witch, right? Um, but it was just like a very big crossover, a very big different change. Um, and it doesn't quite fit into the rest of what she's done. I feel like maybe Reputation doesn't fit in sometimes, but it's still very like upbeat edgy different versus 1989 for me is like the most mainstream album she has like it was made for mainstream media it felt I, I don't know how else to say that um but i will say that season of the witch is a fun film it is a very great film for halloween season lovers um but it just doesn't resonate for me honestly as a fan like i love things about it i just feel like it's very slow and it just doesn't catch my attention the way a Michael Myers film does, you know? But that aside, um, it does lead into Halloween Ends and how they could have righted all the wrongs of it. So I did want to share uh, mine and Mr. Spooks' theories of how Halloween Ends should have gone. Um, and they're two different ideas, but I really want to talk about them because I feel like they really missed the mark with satisfying Halloween lovers again this was not a michael myers film it was a cory film i guess i don't even know what it was but there was just not enough michael myers we didn't like seeing him the way that it when things went down it was just weird so for me or let's talk about season of the witch because um we just talked about it so mr spooks has this idea that when we were seeing the promos for this era we kept hearing Laurie Strode talk about like evil transcends he's not human he's just getting stronger and Mr. Spooks was like wow this is like the perfect way to tie in season of the witch we're trademarking this idea by the way Blumhouse anyone who wants it like contact us if you want to make the film because we'll make it for you <laughs> Um, but Mr. Spooks' idea was that they could have tied Season of the Witch into Halloween Ends, made the entire franchise work, mic dropped the bitch, you know, um, and they totally missed it. And his idea is actually really clever and it makes so much sense. But he was like, all they have to do is say that that Michael Myers mask was a shamrock, a uh, silver shamrock mask product that was chipped and that's how he keeps getting all these powers and boom the whole thing would have made sense and boy did halloween ends not make sense that's all we're gonna say right um but me as a jamie lloyd fan i actually had an alternate theory and i was so convinced i was gonna be right but i was wrong so again blumhouse anyone you want to make this film contact ghoul mates entertainment we'll make it for you um but my idea was that Lindsay was going to become evil and become the next killer in the halloween franchise because in halloween kills you see her like 
kind of enamored by the knife when she's gonna pick it up before she like uses it and then at the very end when they're driving away from the house on fire she's still holding the knife and I'm like they're alluding to the fact that she's like drawn to this knife and she's like I don't know evil transcends you know and especially with how the films like paid homage to all of the other timelines i was like you know this would be the perfect way to connect the jamie lloyd lloyd idea too because dang it i didn't want to say this but spoiler alert jamie lloyd gets her powers because she touches him and at a certain point i believe that Lindsay touches michael as well so i'm like you know what this would be such a cool way to connect everything as well we are actually killing michael myers it's the end of michael but now we're gonna have this new killer which would be Lindsay. she did touch him um so it would have been a really cool way to tie in the fact that like the jamie lloyd timeline bring all the timelines together somehow um not actually bring them together but just like just those little like homages and connections and easter eggs like they were so well done in this era and halloween ends just like really messed up like they just did not connect anything to the Halloween Ends film and I think that's where they went wrong um and I also just want to say I personally thought that the way they got rid of Michael Myers once and for all was just kind of silly as well and I was like you had you had the moment in Halloween H2O you had it where they just like cut his head off that's it that's all you needed it could have been that simple but no we just went over the top with it again so I don't think it was a horrible film. I would still say Resurrection is definitely worse than Halloween Ends. It just wasn't the ending that we all needed for closure. So I did want to wrap up with some key takeaways as an aspiring filmmaker, of course, that I noticed throughout watching the franchise. And one of them being, of course, I already talked about how the smaller your budget, the more creative you have to be. And that is definitely something very inspiring for me. But something I noticed about the films was that the bigger the budget got and the mo movies that are most talked about for like not being good Halloween films was movies that fell further that went further and further away from the magic of the first film you know Michael is slow he doesn't do much he doesn't interact a lot and it felt like the bigger the budget got the faster he got sometimes the more like he did things that didn't really make sense that he would do um and it just felt very like more mainstreamed and it just felt like inauthentic to the brand so for me that was just a really big wake-up call of like hey if you're ever fortunate enough to actually have something get really big and get a sequel like don't lose the heart of the magic of the first film simple is better and I think that that is honestly something just that really stuck out to me is like the more bigger and crazier things got the less it felt real and like the actual Michael Myers you fell in love with. Um, so that was my biggest takeaway. And not as a filmmaker, well, yes, as a filmmaker, because this has been a really big lesson for me. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more why taking my time is so important to me in a second. But um, when I started the Halloween Eras tour this year, I actually came across a meme on social media. And it resonated with me so much. And I will continue to remind myself this as a creator of all types so it says michael myers taught me a valuable life lesson it doesn't matter how fast everyone around you is moving if you're determined just move at your own pace and you'll kill shit every time um and this resonated with me so much as you guys know i have been yearning to slow down this month um this halloween it was my goal of the year and I can definitely 100% say that I achieved that. It. I would lie to you guys if it was easy. I will definitely say in true Taylor Swift form, old diet, old habits die screaming. It is so hard to kill old habits, um, but I'm so grateful for you guys, especially as we're approaching Ghouls Giving this week for giving me the time and space and being so encouraging. Um, I actually had a great conversation with a friend this week and I talked about how, and I'm sharing this with you guys for the real side of how achieving your dreams is not easy. Um, I feel terrified and so behind with this new dream of mine. Like I am in my 30s. I spent my entire life, time, money, education on 
this career path of like wanting to be an industry leader in social media marketing and realizing I have a new dream now and I feel so behind like I could have spent all that time working on this new dream and she reminded me like everything you learned you're gonna take with you and even if filmmaking isn't it you're gonna take what you learned from this journey into your next one and you cannot put timelines on things like life is way too short um make your own rules do what you want follow your heart and I really needed that reminder and it reminded me like especially as a creator it is so hard to remember to move at your own pace to stop comparing yourself to other people's timelines um so that was my key takeaway and my lesson of halloween this year is to remind myself that i got some mandy myers in me and i'll kill shit every time i just have to take my time magic does not happen overnight um so i hope that leaves you guys with a little bit of inspiration with some real mandy moment of the year i hope you guys have a fantastic feast this week eat lots be unapologetic about it um and be grateful for the little things in life i know it's hard these days i know times are tough it's hard to stay positive right now but just remember that there are always magical moments for yourself there are still things to be grateful for in your life um i am definitely reflecting on one of the most memorable best halloween years of my life this year i can't believe that i finally did the halloween eras tour um i can't believe that i actually got to film my very own michael myers short film um i want to share this picture with you guys right here a friend took it i had no idea how happy i was on set but this picture i literally want to like frame because i didn't realize like how happy i was until i saw that picture like it was a dream come true to do something like this with my husband and for it to involve my favorite character of all time um so it, it was just a magical year for me and I haven't even shared my journey of horror with you guys lately. She's growing up. She's watching horror movies by herself. So I'm just grateful that I have had those moments for myself and I hope that you guys have small moments that you can look back on and focus on right now as things start to get more stressful because the hol holidays and what's happening right now tend to do that to you. So take care of yourselves and I hope you guys have a fantastic feast for ghouls giving and i hope that you guys have a very magical spook must until next time sending you goals and kisses bye